in general reflections on the first year? Well, everybody's been extremely welcoming. Um, everybody's been very friendly and everyone's been very keen to make sure that I know what's going on. So I've enjoyed that part of the first year enormously, getting to know people, spending time at council meetings, spending time at community meetings, spending time out and about campaigning. And all of that has helped me get a bit of a sense about what is actually happening in Thurrock. And one of the things that really strikes me is how hard life is for people as prices go up and as wages stagnate. And as somebody like me, I'm not unusual in this community, um, traveling into London every day to work, simply the price of the fares going up, which again, we've seen this week, another increase, again, um, above inflation, it really puts a squeeze on people's pockets. People do long hours, particularly with the length of the train journeys in and out of town, and that is really, really tough for them. So that's one thing that kind of combines how I, my own experience with other people's. But there are lots of things that are really making life tough for people around here, and I really want to be able to see what I can do about it before 2015. But are people speaking to you as the Labour candidate as some form of salvation or are they people saying to you, well you lot are just the same? What, what welcome are you getting on the doorstep as a Labour candidate? Well that's, that's what's very interesting. I mean I think what we all were aware of is when we were all out campaigning in May, how low the turnout was. A lot of people still feel that politics is something that's broken, that doesn't really have much to do with them. But once you start talking to them about, are you comfortable with what's going on here? I understand there's an issue with parking. Um, there's been some vandalism down the park. How do you think we should mend those things? Then you start having an interesting and useful conversation where people think, well, actually this person's listening to me. They're not just spending all their time talking about, you know, billions of pounds here or there, which can feel like numbers which are a long way away from people's lives. Most people here don't even know most people don't really understand what a billion means. What I want to be talking about is the difference between whether they can make ends meet this week and whether they're actually going to have the opportunity to be able to have a decent job next year and for their kids to be able to have the homes they want to be able to grow up in. How do you keep in the public eye? Because a lot would say that Jackie Doyle Price, especially name-checked in the autumn statement, appears to be doing a very good job and seems to have her finger on the pulse. How do you keep in the public eye? I do as much as I can while I'm here, which is obviously outside of my working hours. So I spend quite a lot of time um, out and about with uh, in, at local community events and and, uh, and so forth. I would obviously dispute your analysis that Jackie Doyle Price is doing a good job. A lot of uh, MPs, Tory MPs, got name checked in the autumn statement simply because they have marginal seats. It's a sign of how frightened they are that they feel that they need to do something like that. And to be honest. £115 million for that Junction 30 is not as much as it needs, it's too late. We could find ourselves with concrete mixes on that roundabout when DP World opens. It's a tragedy that she can actually claim that that's any kind of success really for this community. We need much more active uh, government here to be able to make the infrastructure work so that we can be the distribution hub, not just for here, not just for London, not even just for the southeast of England, but for the country. That's what our potential is. And having upgrades for junctions to, too late and with too little money is a very, very disappointing uh, position for any MP to, to be in. And I wouldn't sit, claim that as success if I were, was her. And what about the autumn awesome statement in general and, and relating to people of Thurrock? I mean, what, what were the benefits, if any, for, in your opinion, of the autumn awesome statement? Well, you'd, you'd understand if I wasn't going to emphasise exactly the benefits. What I could see was that most families are going to end up at the end of this parliamentary term a thousand pounds a year's work, worse off. When people talk about the squeeze on welfare, there's the, what was most of the, one of the most pernicious things that George Osborne did um, was to suggest that there was a difference between people who work hard and those who stay at home with their blinds down. He has no understanding of what people's lives are like. He has to take some responsibility for the fact that many people can't get a job and can't get enough work to be able to make ends meet. And that 60% of that welfare support that he is squeezing goes to working families. That includes maternity leave, paternity leave, working tax credit. Those are things that people actually rely on because they are not paid enough. And that is one of the tragedies of the autumn statement. Where do you think we'll be in April 2015, if that's the date for the general election or the month in which you've been? Where do you think we'll be? And what do you fear we'll be? Well, what, what, what makes me most anxious 
is that what we have now is a government who is manifesting one of the greatest weaknesses that you can have, which is that you, it's a sign of madness, isn't it, to continue to do something and expect a different outcome. They are continuing to slash back support and support for people who need it and also active government to be able to kickstart the economy and what worries me most is that come 2015 the people who need support and need help to be able to start their businesses maintain their businesses employ more people and to be able to bring up their kids are not going to have the support that they need and that their their own confidence and their own ability to be able to make the, their way in the world will be will be um, undermined. Now, I believe that this can be a much better country than it is at the moment. And what's most depressing about the way that the Tories speak is that they're basically saying to everybody, there isn't an alternative to this. There is only this mis misery. There is only this austerity. And somebody else is to blame. So they're dividing our community and they're dividing our country. And what I want to be able to do is come 2015 be able to say to people here, you know what, we can be so much better than that. And to be able to show them what difference Labour can have, can make, which is one of the reasons why I'm so pleased that one of the things we've done in the last year, myself and the local councillors, is make the decision that the Thurrock Council, run by Labour, will be a living wage employer. Now that makes a direct difference, bearing in mind the things we're talking about in terms of welfare cuts and benefit, uh, benefit cuts, as well as the underemployment that we see that at least people will have the dignity of knowing they're being paid a decent wage if they're employed by the council. And the next step will be to campaign that other employers here pay a living wage for their employees. Because the least you should deserve when you go out and do a fair day's work is that you get a fair day's pay, which is enough to cover your rent, your food, your heat and your light and your travel. It's not much to ask. Is it an exciting constituency? It is. I think some people have told me, other people I've been speaking to about doing this, that it's not unusual for you to kind of fall in love with a place once, you, once you're chosen. Because those cho they've chosen you, and that's an, a massive, massive honour. And then everything that happens here becomes a way of understanding how we can make the world a better place. And that's why I love being here. But in the, do, you, do you sometimes turn around and think, what state are we in in 2012 when there's food banks and there's people walking five ten miles to try and get some food do you not think in therapy in 2012 how, how have we come to this well i am absolutely shocked by the consequences of some of the, these government policies and let's be honest about it people don't end up that poor by accident um that is actually the consequences of you know cutting support and and ending up with a, a stagnant economy which means that people don't have the work that they need in order to be able to make ends meet but what i have been really struck by is how thorax communities have really pulled together and are helping each other what you'll see is quite a lot of the churches are running food banks and even if you are somebody without religion like me being able to support those food banks is at least something we can do to be able to show that we care to make to make to take the edges off absolutely the worst of the uh, effects of this recession and this government's activities on those people but also the strength of them coming together means that we've got to be able to say it doesn't have to be like this we shouldn't have to be doing this and that strength of community needs to be then directed towards saying well, what do we really want the world to be like and what about you know we're down here in Tilbury and, and there's a, the Christmas Christmas lights etc and and, and but there are people who need to be stay warm and keep warm and what, what can be done for these people and what's your message there? Yeah, well I'm hoping to go to a number of switching on of the Christmas lights over the next couple of weeks because again that's a really good um, uh, indication of how strong the communities are here. But especially as it's getting colder, um, we all need to remember that there are some people in our communities who are really, really struggling with money and really need to keep warm, particularly the elderly. So if anybody sees one of their neighbours who is elderly they need to be saying to them remember to keep warm and to give them give them some help because right now it's really tough for people and we need to be able to make sure that over Christmas we all stay warm and stay safe